There are families whose, and we're talking Christian families, pastors' families, elders' families, in good godly churches, their sons are rebelling, hanging out with homosexuals and getting married, and the parents are invited. What would you do if that was the case? Here's what I would do. Sackcloth and ashes at the entrance to the church, and I'd sit in cow manure, and I'd spread it all over my body. That's what I would do. And I'm not kidding. I'm not laughing. I'm grieving. I'm mourning. I'm pointing out the problem. It's not a gay time. This is the pe- these are the people with the sores, the gaping sores, the sores that are pussy and gross, and people are coming in and carving happy faces on the sores. That's not a nice thing to do. Don't you dare carve happy faces on open pussy sores. <laughs> It's a battle with a demon. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Get out there and push your mingle creative profile and start trolling. No, I hope nobody has your back on this one. You sick bastard. We're practically at NPR. And welcome to Atheist Airwaves episode number 122. I'm Christian Ferris. I'm Reb Spence. I'm Chesney Meagle. And I'm Petey Alfaro. We record live every Tuesday at 7.38 p.m. Central, so come hang out with us in the chat room. Our intro audio this week, and yes, I am crying because it's freaking hilarious, is uh, Pastor Fred Swanson, who was addressing the National Religious Liberties Conference last November. Uh, We didn't catch it until just now. Uh, This guy is freaking amazing. Don't you dare carve smiley faces in pussy sores. It's it's quite the image that he creates with his words. I, if anything, I can understand why he is such a, a sought speaker. after yeah. a high rolling speaker. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember when it came out and people were making fun of him for just having tear tears of rage on stage. They, he was literally crying because he was so upset over this weird that he got invited to a gay wedding. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, no, we can't have that. The, the parents are invited. <laughs> okay, dude. Oh, it's... I'm just, and here I am over here just carving smiley faces into pussy sores. Who does that? Like, where did he get that image? Who thinks of that shit? I, I can only imagine he's thinking, like, AIDS it's, sores or something. It's oh. some metaphor. Because that's, so... that's what they get, right? It's not oh. supposed to be taken literally, oh, and still. you're taking it out of context. Oh, <laughs> I'm the crazy one, right? <laughs> no, I really do feel like he is drugged out, completely drugged out. I can think of no other way for carving smiley faces in pussy sores. So freaking gross. Yeah. Those this, are bad drugs. Here's an unrelated note, because I was trying to write notes about this this article this week, and it I, I don't know how to spell pussy. How the hell do you spell pussy? <laughs> yeah, I, know, I remember when I was reading the transcript, I was like, pussy sores? Yeah, I was- <laughs> I was like, pussy sores. What, what is he trying to accomplish? I don't understand. And then here, I was like, oh. I think hmm. I would go with an IE. I don't know. I, I feel like, because I even went to the dictionary. This is what kind of fucking nerd I am. Like, I, I'm obsessing. Is it there? No, it's not. Oh. But I feel like maybe pussy is not a word. Probably not. Um, I do know, being a, a vet tech, that uh, we have gotten in trouble because people uh, actually try to spell those things into yeah. the medical records and you're like oh no 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 well, wouldn't it actually be like pustule discharge or something like the the medical purolytic term? Was that uh, purulent excuse me would be the appropriate term yeah i'd like to see that preacher guy say that on stage right. people are like pure whoa whoa what is he, he has about? to talk their talk <laughs> so uh tech leslie in the chat room claims that it's p-u-s-s-i-e so uh, you know well done but uh <laughs> <laughs> I, I spent a lot of time looking how to spell Pussy instead of pussy, but uh, I figured maybe they were homonyms. You know, it's the same, spelled the same way. You just you know put different emphasis on them. Right. Thank God they're not synonyms. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I I also do want to be clear that this is not just like a whack job conference. This wasn't a a you know gather. There were about almost two thousand people at this conference. Yeah, and first of all, four presidential candidates. Yes, four. I only thought three. Uh, there was Huck- Cruz, Which one? Huckabee, um, the Jindal? Kasich. Jindal. Oh, Kasich was there yeah, too. Kasich was there. Okay, and, and that was and when this first came out, the only thing that I saw from this whole thing was the exchange he had with Cruz, where he was like, 
what's the most important thing to you, Cruz? I got one question. It's, and the whole thing for Cruz was like, any president who doesn't start off every day on his knees is uh, not fit to be president. And that was, whenever this happened, that was the only thing that got through the news cycle. I don't know how we missed that the whole preamble to this. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. I, I don't understand what giving oral sex every morning has to do with being an effective president. I really don't, but... <laughs> Could be fun though. <laughs> that, that's the fun way of being president. Yeah. Okay, I just got a wife, right? So there's nothing wrong with that. Well, and the thing is, is that before this conference took place, I mean, so a, it was a legit conference with you know legit people. I mean, as legit as these people are, but I mean, they had four presidential candidates attend it, and uh, Ted Cruz at least can't say that he didn't know what it was about yeah he was questioned the day before about like hey this preacher guys made some uh rather radical statements uh what do you think about that and he's just like oh i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> oh he says what he says and uh whatever i'm trying i'm trying to suck off the religious right here well you just got yeah, shut, <laughs> shut up about whatever this other stuff is jesus um nice. so uh, this clip wasn't even the end of his craziness. I have more clips from this guy. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he went on he for went a on very for, long time. He like did. Four or five minutes of that. It yeah. was, it was it, just pure gold through and through. <laughs> it was just incoherent rambling. It was. Did he cry the whole time? I think so. He, he appeared to, yes. He had that quavering kind of like. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. So passionate. All right. So I'm going to play another clip for you. Yes. Leviticus 2013 calls for the death penalty for homosexuals. Yes. Romans chapter 1, verse 32, the Apostle Paul does say that homosexuals are worthy of death. His words, not mine. And I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I am not ashamed of the truth of the Word of God. And I am willing to go to jail for standing on the truth of the Word of God. And I know I've taken the counsel. Many have told me this weekend, you be careful. You choose your words carefully. We have presidentials coming down to this conference this weekend. I understand that. But I am not ashamed of the truth of the word of God. And I'm willing to go to jail for it. So he took the counsel and he was, but no. So fuck that, I'm doing my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what denomination is he with, do we know? I have no idea. Well, because of the crying thing, it, it makes me wonder if he's not Mormon. Because I know that on irreligiosity, they say that is a thing to prove how uh, sincere you are. They'll fake cry, which mm. is why, um, oh, what's the numbnuts on TV that does it? Um, I, I don't watch. Yeah, I don't really. I generally. try to avoid those yeah. channels. She's an Earth scientist. Earth what scientist? Don't you dare throw that word in there. Is that a religion? <laughs> or something? Interesting. Uh, I like the way he tried to say, "Oh, but there's presidential candidates." You know, they were trying to just kind of blend in and just yeah. make him, themselves present without really being totally associated with them. And he's like, "Nope, you're coming with me. Yeah, you're gonna buy my <laughs> shit and you're gonna sell it to everyone." You know, I think it's one of the important things is you always hear Christians saying, you know, the, the, it's only Old Testament. And the New Testament mm -hmm. came about and just wiped it. So I know there's a lot of people. I don't know why they're so crazy about it, but it's not even New Testament. So don't worry about it. But it is New Testament. Yeah, it the is. The New Testament hates gays just as much as the Old Testament did. And if you're going to try to uh, justify it with theology, you're going to fail because it's right there. Clear as crystal. So he reminds everyone in the room that God wants gay people to be executed, New Testament and Old Testament, and then tops that off with, I'm willing to go to jail for it. What is he exactly implying with that? They should be executed and I'm willing to go to jail. Sounds like I'm... I'm a, a, a threat of violence. Right, it's like eminent. I'm gonna do it. Well, God's law trumps man's law. Right? <laughs> well, except that it doesn't in this case, which is really, really freaking weird. <laughs> Um, uh, 
kept uh, Reverend Redbeard in the chat room says, so he's willing to kill homosexuals? Apparently not, because he goes on right after that clip to say that he's not advocating for these laws to be put in place today. And why? Today. Right? <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. That's the JK at the end. <laughs> <laughs> wink, wink, nod, nod. You know, uh, they won't catch this Future from... presidents, if you're listening. <laughs> yeah. Backstage. Right. He says uh, that he's not advocating for that because, quote, that's not such a big deal. And I'm like, the word of God, the, the gospel of Jesus, which is not the gospel of Jesus. So I don't know what he's talking about, but uh, that he says he's not ashamed of, not a big deal, which just makes me think, then why the fuck are we doing this yeah. thing? Why are you crying right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big deal. Let's just go have a beer and laugh about that one time you were talking about killing gay people. <laughs> I was like, oh, you... yeah, it's a little over the top with that. Uh, I, so I don't understand why we're here talking about this guy. I don't know what he's crying on stage for if it's not a big deal. However, a little while later, he came up with a, a different answer to the question. And I'm going to play that. He's answering his own question about... Um, why laws shouldn't be in place right now to kill gay people. You say, why wouldn't you call for it? I say it's because we need some time for homosexuals to repent. That's why they need time to repent. Do you understand? America needs time to repent. You say, why don't you call for it? America needs time to repent of their homosexuality, their adultery, and their porn addictions. America is steeped in a destructive form of sexuality. And friends, they're bound for hell. <laughs> it's weird because this is supposed to be a political event with yeah. presidential candidates. And this guy's just straight up giving a sermon. I can't, I don't know. Well, I, you can tell what he's thinking about. It was adultery, homosexuality, pornography, all have a running theme. With political candidates? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I can only imagine the candidates must have been backstage, been like, I, I, like at least thinking to themselves, is this going to help me or hurt me in the long run? Like me actually going up there on stage, because this guy's obviously crazy. And there's no way I could have a platform with this. I'm, I'm not certain they see him as crazy, though. Oh, they don't know. Mm -mm. And in fact, I, yeah. And I, I, think I can't that, imagine that all four of them all believe homosexuals should be put to death. I, mean, I, I can. They may not be that extreme. I have to be but optimistic. But he's not saying anything that they don't really agree with. Well, so, but I can't imagine them ever saying like, you know what? That's a good policy decision. When we think gays are ready to repent, then we'll start putting these, you know, and I, I just, I have to hope against all goodness in the world that at least these four presidential candidates don't think that actually two of them dropped out or something since then. But yeah. I have to at least hope that they don't actually believe that. Cause that's, that's a very scary proposition that these people, especially Cruz, who's like second for the Republicans actually would believe something like that. I just, I can't, you are I don't want so to. adorable when you're being naive, <laughs> Rev. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they may not advocate for actual murder, but they are definitely in the, oh yeah, it's bad. They need to oh, be I'm sure they want to violate their way. rights. Yeah. I know they want, but, but straight up murder. I have oh, but to he's at not least saying hope. that. He's not saying that. He either. didn't say Eventually, that. Eventually, not today. He's, say, he's saying that this is what the Bible says, and I'm not saying we should do it. And I guarantee you get Ted Cruz to say that. I guarantee uh, it. But he is saying that we should do it eventually. I, I, Not today. Once we've given the homosexuals enough time to repent, <laughs> then we kill the ones After that have After the rapture. I mean, know, that, that's right. what he's saying. And so I, I have to assume that I, I just, I can't, I can't live in that world. It's scary. I can't. <laughs> well, and I got to say, like, this guy that we're listening to, Fred Swanson, he believes it. I think he really believes it. I think the people who are applauding in the background, they really believe it. I think most of these candidates don't, but they know that that's what they have to say mm -hmm. because the religious right are the ones who show up to vote in the primaries. And so there's a little bit of, you know, cunnilingus you have to do with those people. You gotta, you know, start uh, your morning on your but, knees. There you go. Exactly. My hope is that that's the case. So if they don't actually want to do any of that shit, but they just have to give it lip service. Or, they, didn't even actually, <laughs> oh, why? And they didn't have to actually say anything. They just had to, you know, just go out there and be like, Oh yeah, I'll be president. I want you all to vote for me. Yeah. Gays, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bad, terrible, terrible people. Bad. Yeah, well, I mean, and, and that's just the, the way the game's played. I mean, even on the left, 
you know, Hillary Clinton is uh, is being it, it, she's probably pulling her hair out every time Bernie Sanders made her makes her say something liberal because, you know, she doesn't want to she doesn't want it to be played back during the general election when she's going to run to the right. Um, so, I mean, they do the same thing on the right. They're like they run all the way over to crazy town. And then when it gets to the general election, they try and run all the way back to general crazy town. <laughs> And I mean, that's just, that's just how, that's how they do. General crazy town. Sounds like a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but here's the other thing about that, that last clip, because basically saying, yeah, yeah. God said, do this thing, but you know, we don't have to do what God says. We can wait a while. I mean, it was like <laughs> five more minutes. God, can we get like a snooze button on this thing? And there's definitely an alarm clock on that, you know, that you can snooze until you think the time is right. I'm sure God worked that in there somehow. So, you know, I I think that's a strategy that the God of the Old Testament would that would get you smited by that God pretty quickly. You know, he comes down. He's like, oh, hey, you know, I told you to kill all the gays. How's that coming? Well, we were just waiting. (laughs) We thought maybe it would give us some time. It's like, (laughs) no, you're a spineless coward. Die now and I'll get someone else to do it for me. But they say you forgive people sometimes. So we decided to wait a little while and see what happened. (laughs) Not the Old Testament. Well, you know, it's it's the New Testament. We don't believe in the old one, right? Uh, and it also strikes me that if a gay man went to Fred Swanson and made this argument, hey, maybe you could just give us a little time to repent and whatever. There's no, I mean, this guy would, would be screaming about how that's not how that works. It's like, let me just get married, live it for a while, see if it's for me. <laughs> I might at the end like say like, eh, eh, I'd rather not. But, you know, give me that time to really just work through my issues. You, know? you don't know until you try. Yeah. I feel like before that hypothetical gay man got through saying, oh, we need time to repent, this guy would have cow shit just smeared all, <laughs> all, all over Pigs or it didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be in sackcloth and just... <laughs> I love how, like, I guess people in the audience were laughing when he said, I, I would get in sackcloth at the entrance to the church and smear cow shit it's like you thought me. this was stand-up comedy nah this is real bitches <laughs> this is real i'm not laughing this is i'm being serious right now it's like oh he's it's like when serious. someone makes a yo mama joke and they're like my mom's dead <laughs> <laughs> oh jesus this guy i seriously i could i could listen to that guy talk all all day i really could if it weren't for what he was saying i'm sure he'd talk all day if you let him <laughs> All right, let's move on to news news. Uh, right-wing Christian ideas are usually uh, pretty consistently bad. And usually they're designed to fuck with people they don't like, like the other guy. who, Although, to his credit, he doesn't want to kill gay people yet. Uh, this week, Virginia Republican Mark Cole continued that fine tradition. Mark filed a bill that requires schools to implement policies to ensure that every school restroom can only be used by individuals whose anatomical sex ma- matches the gender designation of the restroom. Now, what the bill does not indicate is how exactly a school is supposed to verify the anatomical sex of all of their students. But I'm sure Reb has some good ideas about how you do that. Well, I mean, it's, it is kind of because like in the bill, they don't actually say how to do it they just like every school board has to come up with their own policy figure it out we're gonna leave it to the school boards and, and so i can only imagine how that school board meeting is gonna have to go because they're gonna go all right so there's, a, there's an obvious solution here <laughs> we already implement dress codes oh yeah yeah like crotchless pants like everyone was wearing <laughs> crotchless pants and no underwear well i assume they're like <laughs> okay so do we pull down the kids pants or do we let the kid pull down his own pants what would be more respectful for the individual. Uh, or just like, you know, <laughs> can we do a pat and squeeze? Or... <laughs> Casino. But but there could be, they could have implements down there to fool us. So we're gonna really going to have to stick <laughs> our hands <laughs> down there and kind of, Visually you know. is going to be the only way you can't just feel. And then and, and then the other part is, do you, do you take the administrator and the kid privately into a room to figure it out? Or do you like have all the adults stand <laughs> no. in a circle you're gonna, you're gonna get and really an take a look? Regress. I mean, you're going to get into this endless regress because you're going to have to go into the bathroom so that you can pull down their pants to find out if they could go into the bathroom. Oh, man. And then you'll get fined if you go into the bathroom and you find that their anatomical sex isn't the, the correct one. 
I'm, I'm pretty sure you check before they go in the bathroom, like in the principal's office or something. Did it Jack, take them in one at a time? Jack in the chat room says they can get a priest to do the checking. I'll bet you they're <laughs> oh, <laughs> lining up. Come on, I'll do it. <laughs> and they do it for free, man. I was, I was going to say this to me. This seems, is just community service for them. <laughs> to me, it seemed like a business opportunity. Well, I was it'll like, be really easy. We'll send them in. If they come out, they're female. If they stay there, they're boys. I don't know if historically that's accurate now. <laughs> I think it might have been at one point, but I don't know. I, I was thinking about going out and buying stamps and just being able to, and just like going through and just like stamping little kid genitals, you know, uh, inspected by genital inspector number three. Junk. I figured you'd have to wear something like a Jewish star and or they something. Wear that, but it's yeah. going to be like a, a penis <laughs> or like a vagina, a little, you know, thing. Maybe like a Jesus fish. You know, whatever. Yeah. It, it's funny, my, my first point, bullet point under this particular article was, uh, how do they not realize this is an unconstitutional illegal search on a minor? Minor. The most important word there. Like, <laughs> it's a child. Professional kid fundler is going to be a job now. That is Katie's career in the chat room. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like, that, that's just, you know, for a pedophile, that's a sweet way to get your hands on some taxpayer dollars and some children's genitals. Yeah. Well, and they're they're absolutely terrified of trans children, but they're forgetting about the intersex children. So you're going to have someone that goes oh, in there, yeah. and then they're just staring at them for an hour, going, "Hey." Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I and could could a child, an intersex child, use both and just decide, "Oh, today I'm going to be over here." I don't. I don't. Know I don't if... think they would go for that. This is very He's, much no, a no, pick one. I Not have, the people I have, that want this. Yeah. <laughs> if I have both sets of gear. I can go into. I have the. If they did, if they did the check anatomically, you got what's going on? <laughs> that kid would have the run of the school. There is no place off limits for that child. Think of all the <laughs> bathrooms he could pee and poop in. <laughs> well, and that's the other or thing. Or she, whatever the feeling that that. Day. That that was the other thing about this uh, law was that if uh, there was a cha- trans child who uh, wasn't comfortable going into the restroom of their anatomical sex they would they said oh well you could just further uh you know uh stigmatize them by making them go to their own restroom and that just like at first i'm like okay socially that sucks but then at the same time you get your own bathroom in the school are you kidding me like i'm gonna be in my office but i think what like, the supreme court's already decided on the legality mm-hmm. of right the unisex the Ill- yeah. illegality yeah, the yeah. well it, it just it it cracks me up that here in america we are absolutely crack really that word it's gonna throw you over the edge no, i just i almost spit beer into the microphone because forward do slash it, nick in the, in the chat room said if your child is a hermaphrodite do they have to be in the hall <laughs> oh that's terrible that's awful sorry i didn't mean to interrupt with my with my spit take <laughs> but i just it, it's so funny that here in america we're absolutely freaking out about genitals being in the same room together I mean, there are stalls. I guess I've never been in a bathroom. Wait, what? You've never been in a bathroom? You know. Do you so- compost a lot or what's going on here? <laughs> no, no. I mean, these people, they're acting like like you actually can oh. see each other's genitals when you go in anyway. And yet... This is obviously from someone who's never peed at a urinal before. <laughs> Not when I was sober. <laughs> <laughs> The point, the point being is that they already have multi-stall unisex toilets in Europe, and Europe hasn't exploded yet. Yeah. Well, like, oh, well that's a really <laughs> poor choice of words given what's <laughs> happened recently. <laughs> oh. no, but but I, I get the point. This like, is not my night. E- even in America, I mean, if you're a woman trans- transitioning into a male using the male bathroom, uh, and, and say you don't have your penis yet or whatever you're not <laughs> don't have your penis you're yet. you're gonna probably gonna be sitting in a stall anyhow so it's not like anyone's gonna see you doing your business and vice versa and if you're a, a, fe- a female transitioning to a, or a, or vice versa a male trans- transitioning to a female the female bathroom generally only has stalls anyhow once again you're gonna be in your own stall no one's gonna see what you're doing you're not gonna see anyone else so logically it's just not a consistent yeah, especially but, for yeah, children there's, there's like there's like uh, seams in that stuff right and depending like, on what the wall's made them. out of you can see like reflections of it's that shiny tile <laughs> uh, we've talked about this on the show before but i mean i really have no I, I don't i don't see what so pretending that a member of the opposite sex or a gay man happened to see my genitals while i was using the restroom but like, pretty nice huh, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um i just I fail to see the harm that photons bouncing off my penis causes me when it hits their retina. I don't understand 
why that's a concern of anyone. Well, it's it, it just goes back to the, the stereotype that all people that are either trans or homosexual are molesters and that they're mm-hmm. going to be mm-hmm. actively harming people. And so they would rather have them not in the bathroom at all. Well, that would make sense if it was like adults, but these are kids. Like it doesn't make sense for adults, uh, but they, it makes even less sense for kids. Well, yes, I, I, I'm not saying that these yeah. people make sense. I'm <laughs> saying that this is their rationale is that these are the bad people that might hurt you and we need to do something to keep them out. Although if I, if I was to put on my, my Jeff hat for a minute, Let's see if, if I'm going to pretend to be Jeff here for a second. Uh, the lawyer on the show. For, for anatomical correctness and whether you're verified to be a male or a female for the purposes of the school. I would Certified. Ass- you have to get that like a well, seal. Well, I'd assume your birth certificate would be what they would use. That way you can say the doctor when you were born saw that you had a penis because you were naked when you were. So now here's a notarized I, document. I don't this- know. These, that- well, but it still goes back to the intersex individuals yeah. because even now some kids well, come well, out and they go, I don't know. Well, and to, and to that point, uh, in Virginia, you can get your uh, sex changed on your birth certificate. It works the same way as a name change. Correct. You submit, it's actually, the, I think, the same paper. You just have to also, in addition, submit a doctor's notice. It doesn't have to be very in depth. It just says that I, doctor, whatever, have been seeing this person and they I have felt their genitals. <laughs> <laughs> or they're, they're in the process and transitioning. Uh, they identify as a female, so on and so forth. And then you submit that, birth certificate's changed. Then you could take that to your school and say, like, look, here is. A notarized document that says that my uh, son or daughter is now legally a boy or girl, and that that I think but would that, get a, get across because that would be a notarized anatomical doctor said so. But it but sorry, I it, know there's problems with that system. Yeah, but, the, the problem is, is but that, there is a that system doesn't change in the place. anatomy. And for these people, it's only about how you look. But but that would be a notarized it a document that no. certifies. It doesn't mean you had the surgery. But but it certifies that you are anatomically, a, okay. not just penis, but as a person. What, a couple of things. One is that were I a trans person, I don't know that I would want to have reassignment se- surgery. Um, it's it's very expensive. It's yeah. very time it's consuming. It's painful. It's extreme. Yeah. And, and it's not. Well, like, and you don't have to go to the doctor and they are in the process of switching your okay. anatomy I, out. It's well, just a lot that of people just don't opt for it ever. Yeah, this doctor says that, you know, this person identifies as a female and I've known them for this long and so it's all good. Well, no, I, I understand where you're coming from. I'm just saying that for the bigots in this particular article, yeah. that wouldn't matter to them. They only care about what your bits look like because well, to them it's a black and white issue. I don't know. Maybe I'm being too optimistic, but I have to. Yes. I have to hope that the guy that wrote this, in the back of his mind, wasn't thinking, "Yeah, we're going to totally strip kids' pants off and look at their." No, fucking, no, I don't. I, know, I, I no, don't he was it. thinking He's... that there's scary, gross people out there, and well, I don't want to see that. Well, I have to at least think that probably in the back of his mind, he was thinking there would be some sort of notarized document. No, 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 say, no, not not a pants pull down. Fondue I, I, I agree. I, I agree with you that he's not. He was not trying to. In, uh, get genital inspectors into this whole thing. He w- he just wasn't thinking. He's not a smart person. He's a uh, an ideologue who is just pandering to the uh, idiot right wing Christians who are his base. That's it. It hadn't. That is really loud. You're you're chewing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, these pick up like almost everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. To uh, swallow it when they go. That that's going on SoundCloud. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you were doing it that oh, big. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like the little frog thing going down. Ah, <laughs> uh, God. So yeah. So four slash Nick in the chat room says, "Do they care about the altered bits?" Yes, they. I think they would still care about that. That that would be something that. You know, little Pollyanna over here is like uh, pretending like it's not going to matter. It would totally matter. And the other thing is this. I don't I do not expect someone who is trans to have surgery. I am unswayed by this whole, oh, they still got a penis. No, I'm not swayed by that. And the other thing is that I really don't care if photons from my penis hit your retina. I don't care. I want to go back to something that Kitty Scary said in the chat room a little while ago. Something, one of the things I wanted to say scrolled off. But she said, I will say that some kids are assholes and will look under the stall. Happened to my youngest. And then they teased him about seeing his privates. Um, I've, I had that happen in um, grade school 
the uh, some dude came over the stall while I was in there, and that was like really upsetting to me when I was a kid. But I think that's because I had been taught at that point that photons from my from my <laughs> private areas hitting someone's retina was very shameful. Uh, I had a friend who similar kind of thing happened, but then when the kid came to report back to the class what he saw, he's like. Cody's dick is huge. <laughs> and like, then he came back, it's like, no, it's not. It's really small. Or whatever. And then, then as we got, you know, high school, we were just like, ah. But at that time, it was like, no, 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 it's not big. It's very small. It was, it was, it was, it was very funny. I, I love it when the, the cultural norms haven't, you know, reached the, the kids yet. That's great. Uh, but I, I don't think that um, this is really, I think this is an issue that should be addressed with through education of both educators administrators and students and our lawmakers apparently and apparently our lawmakers but we can't really enforce that but at schools we can just say hey maybe we can have fact and medically accurate sex education that would include issues around intersex children trans children hey, oh I, sorry i'm unmuting you java uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's horrible! Oh, that's so bad. Sorry, that's I so forgot. Bad. I forgot because you, you still, you still had to. Okay, sorry. <laughs> it, was just, it sounded like that, right? Not... Yeah, for all of you listening at home. Do it again. I don't get it. <laughs> Might as well finish it up. <laughs> I, I chose I chose a Hershey bar thinking that it would not make noise. Apparently it does. And it's great because now you have this pile of Hershey's chocolate in front of you just like taunting you. <laughs> <laughs> just need a sweet like, water hand. <laughs> you, you could always like put it in your hands and melt it down. Just, <laughs> just lick it off. And, that won't make any sound. Besides us laughing at you, but you know what I mean? <laughs> Katie Scary in the chat room also says, I don't see how this bill is at all legal or constitutional. And it wouldn't be. <laughs> no, it's not. I, I don't, if it gets passed, and I don't think it will, but if it does, well, no, it won't and, go past the governor's desk. No, well, and, but that, that again, that goes back to the point. They propose these things knowing full well they're not going to pass, but they're getting brownie points with their, their constituents. That's yeah, the whole that's, point. That's it. They're showing that they are homophobic and therefore everybody like me, please. Give me your campaign donations. Yep. Yeah, and I can't tell you how many millions of dollars here in Texas, taxpayer dollars, that we have wasted on stupid... I mean, our current governor used to be attorney general. He made his career taking on shitty cases. Shitty cases that he lost every time. And we spent millions and millions of dollars defending yeah. shitty cases that he used to prop up his gov his governor gubernatorial race. And now he's governor. Yeah, I remember there was some kind of bill about Christmas that they tried to pass where you like were forced to say it in school because they were they wanted to preempt people saying that we couldn't say Christmas in school, even though that was never even a thing to begin yeah. with. <laughs> Texas, number one. Yeah. I love it. It's so wonderful. Sorry. And I'm now I'm typing really loud. <clears throat> Uh, Sticky Mongoose in the chat room was just saying some asshole altered my bits when I was born. I assume these meaning uh, circumcision, but um, or a blowjob gone awry. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, I was going to say what is it called the uh, breasts, right? Breasts or boobs? Breasts. Oh, breasts. Oh, breasts. oh, oh breasts. yeah, the the Jewish tradition yeah. of cutting. Yeah. Well, actually, cutting and sucking the, the yeah. baby. Yeah, off. Something oh. something else that I kind of it wasn't on topic so i didn't bring it up earlier but um since you already did <laughs> is it still um considered to be um what, what is the word i'm looking for uh just, kosher no violence <laughs> criminal no okay <laughs> sexy it, it used to be when a child was born intersex the doctor would take oh, yeah. the child and alter them sometimes even without the parent's consent mm -hmm. because well they're obviously going to want that so and that's what I was thinking. I wasn't even necessarily thinking circumcision, but we're, we're talking about checking children's bits. You mm -hmm. know, some of them may have already been altered uh, against their will. Yeah. No, well, I would think, hopefully as a parent, whenever you go change that first diaper, you're like, what are all these stitches? <laughs> 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 I need to call my rabbi. <laughs> I, um, I really do believe that no changes should be made with anyone's consent at that at that age <clears throat> because the anatomical sex of the child may not match the gender of the child and you won't know until later and i i've read a million cases where they said oh we're just gonna make this kid a boy and 
uh, the kid was growing up. And no, that's not it. You know, so I, I think you should leave baby junk alone. <laughs> let babies have the junk they're born with and let's figure it out later. Whether well, don't they circuit- sometimes change that because there's like a pro- like urinary problems that they'd face if they left it the way it is? Not that I'm aware of, but I... I it, there, perhaps. there are very, very rare cases of things like hypospadia, but that you would fix because it's medically necessary, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily be removing things for cosmetic alterations. Because it, again, in those cases, it's much easier to make a girl than a boy, mm. so you'd be removing a lot. Hypospadia is like the best ride at Six Flags over Mid America. <laughs> what? You better catch it. It's, it sounds like a, it sounds like a, an amusement I park quit. ride to me. <laughs> <laughs> she made it one and a half shows, not even half. <laughs> it's got some kind of a record, right? <laughs> okay. I don't think we've had anyone quit mid show. Post show, but not oh, mid-show. Yeah. post show. <laughs> we've had time... people rage quit in post show. Yeah. When, when Jay left and then he spilled water and then he had to pick up the water. <laughs> oh, it was amazing. It's just like, this is happening. <laughs> it's like, I'm sorry I made fun of your movie. <laughs> It was so intense and funny at the same time. Yeah. It's like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, and we made uh, Susan rage quit in the middle of post show once, yeah. which was sad. I felt bad about that one. <laughs> Even though you were one. technically right. I, I was technically <laughs> correct, but I maybe should have let her talk. <laughs> Oh, our post shows are the greatest. Right? Stay you, tuned. <laughs> who knows what's going to happen next? Chesney may be walking Ch- home. Chesney <laughs> already seems to be on uh, the hot seat. So. <laughs> All right. So this next story is about a 15-year-old Pakistani boy. Uh, and we're going to call him Bobby. I have his actual name, but I'm going to call him Bobby because Mohammed is such a cliche. Bobby was daydreaming in a mosque while his imam droned on and on. And they never say... Those guys... Never say anything that is interesting to a 15-year-old. So I don't even blame him. I can remember doing that in church, just like you zone all the way out. I can still hear that. Um. <laughs> but also remember, when you went to church, the threat of life and death wasn't hanging over your head if you didn't pay attention. So, yeah. so uh, he happened to come back to the reality at the exact wrong moment when all he heard the imam saying was, raise your hand. And so he promptly did that and raised his hand. Unfortunately, the question he was answering was, if you have stopped praying to Allah, raise your hand. And you can imagine how that goes over in the middle of a mosque <laughs> in the Middle East. And this was not like in one of the major cities. It was some tribal area right. in the boonies. Right. Where like anything fucking goes. Yeah. This- yeah, that made me laugh yeah. really, really hard when I read that, and I felt kind of bad that it's just like he picked it up at the wrong time. Right. I mean, there, there's a really great... Uh, I, I love this teacher to death, whoever did this. It's, it, it's in high school, it's a classroom, and there's a, a student who's asleep. And uh, clearly he has like gotten everyone, all the students in the room on board, and they all just start applauding, you know? <laughs> and it wakes the kid up, and he just like, he's like looking around, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got a class, I got a class too. <laughs> And it was kind of like one of those things. It's like, I don't know what's going on. Raise your hand. Okay. I'm going to do Probably it. I should be like, uh, yeah, I, I don't wash my hands every day. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what? what? I got to chop this hand off now? <laughs> oh, oh, spoiler alert. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so because it's Islam and it's Pakistan, the others in the mosque got up and were yelling at him that he committed blasphemy, that he's a bad person, blah, 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 which obviously upset the boy. And I feel like if you were in that position and that's and and that's what you've done you've raised your hand at the wrong moment accidentally there are a number of common sense ways to address that issue be like i fell asleep i'm sorry <laughs> which may be even a worse offense or i had a vision from a law <laughs> and i needed everyone to stop so i could tell you i needed you're just like whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> can i have your attention please how do you think mary got away with it with the virgin birth come on now <laughs> It's like sleight of hand, right? Like, <laughs> over here now, over here. Uh, but not Bobby. Bobby was like, go uh, go big or go home. Uh, and I mean, he went home. He went home and then, and then he went big. He uh, got there and he chopped off his own hand. Which, like- and then he went back to the mosque with it on a plate to present to the imam. 
It's like, how do you chop off your hand? Like, uh, like I just, like I, if I had diabetes, I wouldn't be able to prick my f- finger every day. <laughs> I can imagine like chopping up. Like, I'm sorry, Susan. I just couldn't do it. But I couldn't imagine like chopping your. Like, that would be so. Like, well, I mean, like how do you do that? Circular, I just like, circular saw and just. just that be the oh, best he's, way. he's got one of those in Pakistan, by the way. But still, <laughs> they got electricity out there. <laughs> how. He's not paying attention. So not that he didn't believe. Who knows what he was really thinking. But obviously he believed enough to do it. But still, if you're not paying attention, you can't be like all in. And then to go home and still do it. Well, it's just... For me, I, th- this is religious brainwashing at its best. Because this is less about how much you believe the religion. And more about how much you want to stay in part of the group. And how shaming can um, affect you to the point where you self-mutilate and are happy about it. Any anything so that you can keep that that acceptance for your your tribe. Yeah, and I'm just trying to put myself, uh, not even in the kids' shoes, because I I think you can understand that people do some people flew planes into buildings, they killed themselves and hundreds of other people because of religion. So I can put myself in Bobby's shoes. <laughs> I'm trying to put myself. <laughs> Try to put it myself into his parents' shoes. You know, they go home. They're very upset because fucking Bobby, man. He's like, <laughs> you're a disgrace. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Now um, everyone's going to laugh at us. <laughs> <laughs> we can never go to the, like, whatever, what, what events do Muslim people go to? I don't know. Brisses, but. <laughs> no. Uh, they're not called like Muslim brisses? brisses? I, don't, I don't know. What we can never like. go to the public ex- executions again. We can never go <laughs> no see stonings. them. Thro- no more seeing people, gay people thrown off buildings. Oh. That's that's out for us now, Bobby. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Atheistairwaves.com. Um, so I'm trying to think of what my reaction would be. I'm sitting in the living room watching football, steaming about my my son's behavior and he comes running in screaming my head my head and like i don't think i would react the way his parents did which was to parade him around the village as this wonderful well, he, example he, he, he does anybody like the, wonder how he hadn't died of blood loss by this point yes well yeah i mean he basically just threw like the the touchdown pass that won the game i mean that's <laughs> that's what this kid did for his He's parents hero. yeah, yeah. They, they, they used to like everyone's like fuck that family but now they're gonna put that family up like, this is the most virtuous family ever look at this child they raised it's amazing this should be a saint or whatever muslims have <laughs> reverend redbeard suggests that maybe muslims go to pig roasts <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, uh, like, not publicly, but, like, there's probably some, like, you know, underground big roasts. I'll bet you anything there's, like, underground bacon. People are like, this bacon's fucking yeah. awesome. <laughs> Fuck that, I'm Yeah! Who doesn't like bacon, you know, right? You know what happens. I swear to God, because, like, I mean, I know, like, Catholics aren't supposed to eat meat on Fridays during Lent or whatever, there's all kinds of Catholics who are like, oops. Yeah, you, you know, there's like those 80 year old Muslim guys who's like, remember back when we were little and we'd sneak pieces of bacon every once in a while? <laughs> yeah. Like, we, we were so bad. Chicken's <laughs> not meat. <laughs> we were so bad. I, kind of going uh, off of Reb's earlier point and Chesney's earlier point, does anyone really think this kid sliced off his own hand? How badass would it be if he did? Yeah. But <laughs> there's no way. I, I'm sure I, I would have to imagine, like, because, like, you're sitting there and it's like, well, here it goes. Like, yeah, yeah, I assume probably the parents had to hold him down to, like, fuck it, we're cutting your hand off. So <laughs> you're going to have to deal with this shit. You know? I, That's exactly right. I don't know. Um, There was a, oh gosh, I'm not going to remember where this story was from, but there was a, a another story about a, a Hindu man that had done something similar. People do a lot for religious fervor. I, I, I actually find that less unbelievable than some of the other stuff that we cover. Well, if I, if I was to take off my Jeff hat and put on my J hat Uh-oh. now, <laughs> spit take, I, I, uh, I assume like uh, the kids probably lost cause anyhow. Right. I mean, he's going to grow up to be a fanatic uh, probably anyhow. So a really. terrorist with one hand is better than a terrorist with two hands. <laughs> is that what you're trying Potentially. To get yeah. I mean, he's, he's all Muslims are terrorists. That's what you're saying. If I was had my J hat on, <laughs> That would be probably like, eh. So, but but my wife is a teacher and they get, uh, you know, assignments turned in by kindergartners, first graders, second graders, third graders, who clearly their parents did the work. (laughs) It's like, 
Little Billy can't color in the lines when he's at school, but suddenly he's got this 3D di- diorama that is, <laughs> you know. I mean, and I feel like that's what's going on like, here. Like the uh, science project that Heather did for a kid? Yeah. Oh, very. She had pics. <laughs> <laughs> she had some pics of him actually writing. <laughs> so here's a picture of him gluing something on there. It's all him. <laughs> so sure, cr- Heather. Cr- sure. Cr- sure. Big letters, little letters. <laughs> But I really feel like the father just held him down and was like, sorry, you we have to go to the big roast on Sunday. <laughs> you're losing your hand. It's like bacon or your hand and oh sorry, bacon. And if we don't do it, someone else is, so yes. go with us here. Maybe if we do this, they won't burn you to death. Which is the kind of thing that happens in Which you is know. you know the bright side. You, know, you still have one hand. Yeah, you may not be able to masturbate as well anymore, but you're not dead. You use two hands when you masturbate? Well, it depends on if the right or left. <laughs> I have to. It's just like, <laughs> it's like so big. <laughs> one, one, one for the for the finger in the butt and one for the diddle. You know, it's it's whole production, PD. It's a whole production. You don't understand, man. I don't. <laughs> uh, this also makes me feel like Muslims are really fucking stupid. They're like the dumbest theists out there you cherry pick this shit right i mean it's like if the bible says you have to pluck out your eye if you look at an attractive person and want to have sex with them it'd be a lot of eyeless people (laughs) i would have no eyes i would have less than no eyes it'd be a world without eyes (laughs) we'd all have to develop like superhero senses and be daredevil exactly you cherry pick that shit you say that was not meant to be taken literally, or you're taking it out of context. That's how you... Ha- the second they all start screaming at the blasphemy thing, you just start saying, you're taking it out of context! <laughs> That's how you do that shit. You don't actually burn people. You don't actually cut, cut off, off your hands. children's hands. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Well, not Jesus Christ. Uh, Muhammad on a winged horse. There's really not any good Muslim epithets, so. Well, I think because you, you get murdered if you up. mix them up. Don't you? So <laughs> well, well, somebody that's the way in the that chat works. room should get us one. Yeah, yeah. Someone, someone will work on that. I'm sure if you lived in the Middle East, I bet it's more of a thing over there. They probably have their Jesus H. Christ over there. See, they probably <laughs> Well, I don't know, because you get killed, so maybe they don't. Sticky- but in their little groups, you know what I mean? Just the guys like eating at the pig roasts. All just laughing and joking, making jokes. <laughs> Fucking profit. Uh, <laughs> something or other. <laughs> Sticky Mongoose in the chat room says, better use something heavy and follow through. And that's what made me start thinking that the parents must have helped him. Because I'm like thinking about getting like a an axe or something and chopping through your hand. And like I can see myself taking one swipe at it, but there's no way it comes all the way off. There's no way I, you know, unless it's li- ri- literally like the saw that's just like shum, slam, slam down on it. Electric saw. There's Imagine the no psychological way. torture. It's like now smile and deliver this to the imam <laughs> with your one fucking hand. You're, you're gonna take it and you're gonna smile, yeah, Mister. You're gonna fucking like it. <laughs> it's uh. it's tough being a Muslim kid. <laughs> it's really really. What tough. horrible parents that person has. Corpus Christi atheist meets every Sunday at five thirty p.m. This weekend, we'll be meeting at Executive Surf Club downtown. If you don't know where that is, you can visit ccatheists.com for a list of our public events. So this week in our How to Be a Better, better Criminal segment, you get a twofer. Uh, this, the first one, uh, first up, an unidentified man robbed a Nashville bank. He entered the building handed the teller a note demanding cash. It was a very standard bank robbery. Uh, The teller complied and he ran out, but then he dropped his Bible while making his getaway uh, and the police recovered it. I I like the police report for it was, uh, you know, it's it's a white male, 40s, 5'5", 200 pounds, just described like every Christian in Tennessee, (laughs) wherever this place was. (laughs) The first thing that I wondered was if maybe he hadn't, you know, maybe he had just started reading the Bible and hadn't gotten to that whole thou shalt not steal part of it yet. You know, it's like in that part is in the second book of the Bible. It's like 20 chapters into the second book. So maybe he didn't know that stealing was wrong yet. Well, he did leave the Bible and take the cash. So maybe he was 
in his oh, mind. Oh, it was a, a, it was a was purchase. An exchange. It was yeah. A purchase. Yeah, it wasn't stealing. They purchased my Bible from me. Oh, here, I'm going to leave it in the... <laughs> so, some might say the word of God is priceless, but he obviously <laughs> had a price in mind. <laughs> I don't think I know any of those people, actually, but... <laughs> uh, it, it does kind of remind me, though, because there are people who think that the Ten Commandments are a big deal, that it's the basis of our, our criminal justice system here in the United States, that like 6,000 years ago, people were lying, killing, stealing, and <clears throat> uh, no one knew that that was wrong until... Society in general was just chaos, and no one was able <laughs> to move on with their lives without constantly being murdered every day. Well, then someone made up the Ten Commandments, and they're like, oh, why didn't you say that before? <laughs> If someone would have told me murdering my friends is wrong, I would have stopped doing it a long time ago. I really haven't thought of it like that before. Huh. It's like survival of the fittest, though, I guess, right? It's like the ultimate form of evolution. (laughs) If you're Hitler and and don't understand anything about evolution. I'm, I'm fixing your video right now. I apologize for that. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry. I, I was just thinking, why would they report that the Bible had been dropped? I mean, are, are well, they it, waiting for someone to come in and claim it? It probably had they... the guy's name in it. You know, like yeah. when you get a Bible at church and you write your name in it. I don't think so, though. Because in, in my Wouldn't mental Wouldn't they have image, found him then? Right. He's unidentified. Mm-hmm. If his name was in the Bible, they would have identified him. And so I feel like there's nothing there. Maybe he was a Bible salesman. And there are just so many Bibles in his car. <laughs> couple fell out when it was taken off i had this great mental image of the police pursuing a suspect named gideon or (laughs) king james (laughs) we've got a hot lead guys this gideon motherfucker (laughs) it says this bible is placed here (laughs) i've heard of this gangbanger call himself king james Uh, so I feel like his biggest mistake is leaving the Bible behind, obviously, because even though it doesn't identify him, I assume his fingerprints are all over it. And so they can definitely tie him to the crime later if they, you know, find, you know, ha- have reason to suspect that he's the guy. But the <laughs> Jeff Grime in the in the chat room asked if it was an autographed one. I, I doubt it, but <laughs> right, how awesome would that be if you're like a serial criminal and like every time you, you always sign a Bible and leave it. Like that would that would be like the most awesome murder guy ever. The Jesus robber. All of his Bibles are like <laughs> love <laughs> with all my love or best regards Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um But I I think the biggest mistake that this guy made during the whole thing is that the only disguise he wore was a baseball cap. Yeah, they got a pretty good picture they, of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't care how nice you are. I mean, this doesn't apply to anyone in this room, but I don't care if you're a nice person. There's somebody who's going to sell you out for money. I mean, I would turn any of you guys in for $5. No <laughs> question. Like, most people do it for free. Just be like, oh, the drama. Oh, like, I know that guy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what's going to happen on I'm Facebook? I'm getting to Facebook and telling everyone, oh, I know the criminal. That's my cousin Cletus. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Look at the chat room. It's a red herring. He's a Muslim and they're throwing him off the trail. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great. Oh, man. Forward slash naked the chat room. That is a great theory. We hadn't really thought of that. Uh, so maybe this, this shouldn't be how to be, be a better criminal. It's like, we should be learning from this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad, like, <laughs> was like, hmm, I'm not going to wear a disguise. I'm going to be a, the total white redneck guy. It's like I'm a, a, a white, 40 male, 5'5", five, five, 200 pounds. No, no, believe In that I'm uh, you know, Muslim. Muslim? Yeah. Ooh, that's, that's an interesting theory. I wonder how many white, 40 male Muslims there are in Tennessee. This was Tennessee, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, right. the, yeah, I wonder what the statistics are. I think that would be interesting to know. Uh, you go for it, bro. You do, right. you do that you have research. You a computer right there. Right? I, don't have, yeah. I don't have the internet. <laughs> so in our Chat sec- room, get on it. <laughs> in our second How to Be a Better Criminal story, Andrew Fry was in an Oregon restaurant when he made a series of outbursts, and then he decided to whip it out and masturbate for the other customers. Or, I mean, I guess he could have been masturbating to the other customers. For the other customers? Yeah, I don't know which one that was. With some other customers that weren't <laughs> caught? 
Uh, so anyway, the other customers apparently did not appreciate his generous oh. gesture. And the restaurant called the police. The police arrived and were unable to restrain him, not physically, not with tasers. And the guy is physically resisting the police. It's quite the libido. Getting tased, <laughs> and he never stops masturbating. He keeps jerking it during the entire thing. It I, finally... wish, I wish I had that kind of stamina. <laughs> right? Like, wouldn't that be awesome? If I could fight cops. This is and... going to be his audition tape later on. <laughs> <laughs> For his uh, Oculus 3. <laughs> <laughs> Oculus 3D porn. <laughs> but doink, get on it. <laughs> uh, it finally took... 15 police officers to finally make the guy stop touching himself. And while I was trying to think of, you know, how you could do that better, I, w- I think he, I think he just wins. I, I, I would like to see like what the video is like. It's like some guy comes to get him and he just turns around and like, he, 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 he. it's a lot funnier on video. I'm sure if you're just listening to the audio, it may not come come across. It was the eyes, Reb. It was the eyes. He's <laughs> got a direct penis and it's pointed right at me, Sarge. It's a death grip. He won't let it go. <laughs> Imagine if he got that hand around my neck. Oh, my God. <laughs> at this point, it's a hostage situation. <laughs> Really, I think he did this perfectly. I think if you could hold off fifteen cops and still masturbate, you're you've you've accomplished the the peak of your profession. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I so I really just thought I had some advice for the police on this one. Like maybe you guys could have ended this whole event earlier if someone just gave the guy a handy and then just sent him on his way peacefully. There didn't need to be violence in this situation. I just got like a female officer just like show him your boobs <laughs> show him his boobs like, let's get this done <laughs> this isn't gonna end until he ends it so just just go <laughs> we won't let him touch you just stand there it's gonna be okay oh. police are just so quick to use a, a weapon even a taser <laughs> you know it's like oh a guy's jerking up it's like we'll help the guy out it's like let him, let him finish <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's gonna... obviously having a bad day right <laughs> then he won't be so angry <laughs> Jack in the chat room says, taser me here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a little faster. Oh, harder. <laughs> oh, man. But 15 cops tasering you and you're still going. It's like, man. It's quite the fetish he has. Yes. <laughs> Cop fetish, maybe? I don't know. Going back to Pakistan now and away from masturbating on cops. Uh, although I will say, like, it didn't sound like he finished. And that would be the only thing that I think, you know, that could have made it. Oh, he didn't finish? I figure he... I mean, it didn't sound like he did. I mean, it seems like that would be a detail that they would include. Or maybe like they got him right as he was climaxing and he was distracted. They're like, get him now! He's <laughs> like, no, nah, bro, no! <laughs> I like that you have to make the hand. <laughs> 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 So back one, in, one, one in the butt. Remember, that's a two hand <laughs> thing. That's why you got the thing. I don't know what it's called. The, oh, the Jesus. Oculus Rift. There you go. That all makes sense now. All right. So no longer talking about masturbating <laughs> criminals. In also in Pakistan this week, a bill proposed to ban the practice of marrying children was withdrawn from consideration after opponents called it anti-Islamic and blasphemous. I just want to pause for a second for people who are just like, oh, you know, he's got to accept their culture. Uh, maybe not aspects of, of their culture. I don't know. So the chairman of the Council for Islamic Ideology, Muhammad Khan Shirani, said that the bill contradicted Islamic teachings in that, quote, Parliament cannot create legislation that is against the teachings of the Holy Quran or Sunnah. The bill would have raised the age of consent for women to 18 from where it is currently, which is 16. However, in practice, in many of these, you know, we're talking about, you know, way out in the boonies in Pakistan, um, they, the Muslims there go for, you really go by the, if there's grass in the field, play ball rule. The council ruled in 2014 that marrying girls as young as nine was acceptable as long as there were signs of puberty present yeah and, and a lot of these you know these are villages way out where and like there's no criminal complaints so the police aren't ever going to go out there and investigate any of this because they can't really act on anything until somebody says like hey this happened and you know something should be done about it so you're living in this community where you have an elder that says like oh yeah 
perfectly okay. No one's going to complain, and everyone loves their village elder. But even if the police are in that area, they're of the same religion, so they have the same beliefs, so they don't even think that it's a problem. There's no incentive for them to mm -hmm. buck the system. To go and just investigate anything. The saddest parts of the story were that, you know, that some of the kids, because they're kids, like, die because of mm -hmm. the tra the sexual trauma that they yeah. get because they're so small, and it's just like, wow. It was a really sad story or to read. Or very, very long, like lifelong injuries mm -hmm. to their genitals. <clears throat> Some of those, I, I I didn't read it in conjunction with this story, but just uh, I think it was in uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali's first book um, that she detailed some of the injuries that these children grew up with, and they're really, really freaking gross. Um, and I mean, I get where this council is coming from because... <laughs> so I get where this council is coming from because um, it's hard to say that marrying nine-year-olds is wrong when your most revered prophet married a fucking six-year-old. Yeah, but they didn't consummate till she was 11. That was nine. Wasn't it nine they consummated? Ah, uh, I could be wrong. I don't know. Someone say something while I, I fact check. Uh, well, one of the things I found, like, you know, you go through and you read some of like the counter arguments for it. And people were saying like, oh, this group of counselors, they're just some weirdo group. No, they don't hold any whatever. It's just, it's, you know, the y'all's version of the KKK. They have it over there too. They're super weird, but they had enough influence to get this lawmaker to drop his bill. So they have at, at least some influence within that legislature to, to pressure them to drop the, the bill. I mean, that's, they, they may be weirdos, but they sure as hell got it done. I mean, yep. that guy withdrew it. Yeah, it's a literal reading of the of the scripture. Uh, and it was nine years old. Okay. So they, yeah, technically see in the chat room confirms. So married at six, <clears throat> but he was very generous and waited and let her wait till she was nine before she had to have sex with him. So what a generous guy. Thanks, Muhammad. Right. One of the other things that they talk about, like well, when they interview the children that got married so young was like, so what do you remember from your wedding day? And they say, oh, I had to drop out of school. Mm -hmm. At like nine and 11. Yay, and, no more school. And it's just oh. like, you know, people here in the States, you know, we just like, oh, school, I got to wake up for school. And it's just like, oh, that's awful. It's just yeah. so, so awful. The, the thing that really struck me is that uh in this article that i was reading about this ab about this problem in pakistan they interviewed a i think she was like 11 or 12 or something and she was it was her wedding day and they said oh how do you feel about this and she's oh it's great because they're putting all this makeup on me and they're putting all these things and everyone's paying attention to me and then they later interviewed her mother without the daughter being there and the and the mother's just like she has no idea what she what's gonna happen. She doesn't. She's not. You know. Apparently, they're not even warning her, which is just like, dude, at least do that for your kid. I don't know. At the same time, it's almost like let her have just a few more hours of not, childhood. Yeah, I mean that. Uh, it's gonna be a tough position to be in if you if you're that mother and you know what's. I mean, do you tell her and make her just uh, the whole day seizing in fear, or do you let her just? You know, at least have those. Well, you you hours. mentioned um, "Infidel" by Ayan Hirsi Ali, mm -hmm. and I think she also, in a similar situation, said that no, they don't tell you beforehand because they want you to be happy. They give you all this food and they dress you up, and yeah, it makes sense. This way, I do it. So, but the other thing that was puzzling to me because, like I said, I can understand how <clears throat> you don't say that you can't marry nine year olds when your prophet did it. But I, but how can you say that it's nine and only if there's puberty present when the prophet did six? And if you can do the mental gymnastics from six to nine, why can't you just keep flipping all the way up to 18? Yeah, I mean, you, you could still get married and just not have sex with her. I mean, that would fall strictly within the Islamic teachings, you know, if she was, hadn't gone through puberty yet. So it's, and, and that's what, you know, when the, the, they said it's, the, he withdrew it because that uh, group said it was un-Islamic. It was un-Islamic to bar people from marrying and having sex with nine-year-olds. That is un-Islamic. It's so crazy that I can't even, I can't even. And a friend of mine that I went to high school with, who we grew up Catholic, raised in South Texas, is now Islamic. And I'm mm. like, how can you even, you know, 
believe this and be fine with that. And she wears the whole get up. She doesn't care. She wears it to the beach. She wears it to the pool. And it just disgusts me. It's so disgusting. This whole theology theology that they believe this so hard that they have to do this and to be clear they already have laws in place that bar uh a teenage marriage uh what was it like 16 and 18 yeah. so, which is which is and there were a lot of people in the comment sections of all the things that i was reading saying oh you're being so judgmental yeah. and it's the same age yeah, the and- laws are already there but the, the thing they were trying to change the laws to make them more strict so it wasn't the like oh the laws were there why were they trying to make the laws again no they were trying to modify and make them more strict and to be more clear about the language and then the script comes around and says it's un-Islamic. Not only that, they also talk about how they think that... Because whenever those original laws in, like, was it 1929 that it was made that I was reading? Mm-hmm. They also thought that those are wrong, too. Right. So they don't want those there either. It's... Well, clearly, they, because the laws that are in place now say 16, which is very common in the UK and the United States to be 16, which is also kind of nutty. But um, uh, they don't agree with the, that 16 law. They want it to be nine. That's crazy. I, I think they don't want there to be no law besides yeah. just well, if there's grass there. Yeah. Yeah, well, God's you can marry at any age. You just can't have sex until there's some hair growing down there. Something like that. But I mean, who's going to stand there and help and like guard these children? Genital inspector number three. Ooh, I offer my <laughs> my Stamp. services to Pakistan. Get your ass on a plane and get over there There's right a lawmaker now. <laughs> in some state here that we talked about that already has the law ready. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it the Child Genital Inspection Service, which is going to be like, it's going to, just for short, it'll be CJIZ. That, <laughs> nice. that's, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> We've reached the wrong part of the show. Um, no one knows precisely in Pakistan how many technically illegal child wedding, weddings under 16 take place. We do know that one in five Pakistani girls are married by age 18. And UNICEF estimates that it's about 3% of all girls in the country who are married off before they're 15. And Katie Scary makes the point that, uh, you know, not every Muslim believes this. But that's because they're cherry picking. They believe everything in the Quran as written to the way that it, you know, I guess should be or not. I don't know. They would think it's okay, but like most good Christians, most good Muslims also cherry pick the parts of the Bible they like, and most of the time they don't, you know, choose the child bride. Yeah, sure. And uh, Jack and Reverend Redbeard in the chat room both note note that Mormons, FLDS, Warren Jeffs, they all do the same thing. So we're not just picking on uh, Muslims right now. This is a widespread problem in many faiths. Um, but I think what happens is that, you know, in the in Judaism and Christianity, they they like I said before, they're not stupid. They cherry pick the shit. They're like, oh, that's taken out of context. You're not supposed to take that literally. It wasn't he it wasn't she wasn't really six. It was a, you know, spiritually. She was six. <laughs> I don't even seriously, know. seriously. And then like the puberty was the, her budding faith. You know, seriously, that's how you do it. That's how you become a theist without breaking the law or breaking people that's it's still stupid but it's a better way to approach theism for sure and in the region where this is happening it's, it's actually quite common that this kind of thing's happening so you know, yeah. well it's not happening in america as much thank god oh it, it, it is happening in america yeah. I mean, well not, Mormons, not, as, not as much but flds warren jeffs the child marriage is definitely the minority opinion but in, in this region it, it does seem to have a bit more of an uptick uh, Arturo's first wife was 16. He was 19. Yeah. Here, here's the... <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Arturo is your husband? Yeah, he is. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> here's the other thing that really disgusts me is that they're paying dowries. And so, especially in a, a poverty-rich environment like Pakistan, you're talking about wealthy gentlemen who are giving between one and five thousand dollars to poor families and in this region that's a lot of that's money. a lot of money I mean, it's a lot of money for me but in that region, it's even more money like for me that's a lot of money but it's not enough money to give up my daughter but for someone who is like you know 
depends on how she's behaving that day, really. <laughs> <laughs> in, in abject poverty, five thousand dollars, and I'm going to I'm going to marry and I have one less mouth to feed. Yeah, uh, that it, it, to me it's predatory. In a lot of ways, it's just predatory. It's not it's not just that they were they're religion is fucked up and it's not just that their values are fucked up but these people are preying on poor people they're basically buying little girls it's kind of like slavery a little bit it's it's human trafficking really i don't see any way around that i thought it was i don't know kind of funny but like the article i was reading it had the picture of like the two guys with their it was probably their daughters like up on their shoulders but you know yeah yeah in the context marching. of the article it made you think like are those their child brides? I, I, I swear, I spent a lot of time looking at that picture of these guys with little girls and they're carrying them. I'm like, it's probably their daughters, but I'm like, oh, In the context no. of this article. <laughs> oh, so you think of like the, the Rifleman Creed, like this is my child bride. There are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> it is a little weird, like you're, you're bouncing your wife on your lap and <laughs> just squealing. Oh, this is so much fun. Uh, Okay, let's. Yeah, um, in the context of the article, it was a weird picture to put there. <laughs> if it was indeed just like guys and their daughters. Tech Leslie in the chat room says, kind of like old white men going to the Philippines. Yes, exactly like that. That's yes. exactly what I'm saying. Or purity proms. You know, or whatever. you're Ugh. you're preying on people in poverty and taking their their family members basically for money. They see it as a way out, so it's they gross. decide it's. It's going to be fine. It's going to be and okay. And a lot of times, you know, these poor people think they're doing a good thing for their daughter. It's, this man could give you a better life than we could ever give you. You just have to let him rape you first. Yeah. 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 Well, let's, let's move on to good news because I don't want to... Yeah, well, the next one is good news. Yeah, I like this one. This one makes me happy. It does. <laughs> so I can't good... wait to go to Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> good news for atheists in Iceland, which is already a pretty secular country. Less than half the population identifies as religious, and a full 40% of young people say that they are atheists. However, a new study that makes me weep for Americans, you bastards, <laughs> uh, finds that 93.9% .9 of young islanders say the world was created as a result of the Big Bang. 6.1% either had no opinion or thought it came about through some other uh, theory. And the people conducting the study could find zero young Icelanders. Zero point zero. None. They found not one who said God did it. Not even a single guy. They could not find. It's harder to. It's harder than finding Waldo, finding finding a young person in Iceland who thinks God did it. I do wonder if like the wording of the question might have affected the um, outcome of that. Because it wasn't, they weren't asking like the kid, you know, in this 0, 0.0 perspective, they weren't asking the kid like, do you believe, like, are you a Christian or are, are you spiritual or do you believe in some sort of deity? It was just, do you believe God made the the universe? And you will find a lot of Christians to be like, well, well the Bible says this, you know, but, you know, science kind of says this. So I, I do wonder if Would maybe you, that but, no, is kind of mixed. I'm going to object to that yeah. because if you ask that question here in the United States, I mean, yeah, come it, on. It would, be, um, it would be a bigger number, no doubt. But I don't know, you know, wording of the questions matter and oh, you know, what sure. the context of it. I mean, they're, they're <laughs> not exactly saying that they're atheists, but they're kind of just saying that I don't necessarily believe in the creation story, but they may believe other parts of the. The Bible, you know what I mean? Kitty Scary in the chat room says, don't you ruin this <laughs> And I'm with Katie on this one. But, but you don't you say, fucking ruin this. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they may not believe in the creation part of religion, but maybe they believe in the spirit. I'm not religious, I'm spiritual kind of bullshit. You but know? That, that's a step forward then, because at least they're looking at evidence-based science instead of... I guess, but spiritual, not religious people piss me off as well. Well, I'm not <laughs> saying that they don't. I'm just saying that here in the United States, it's what, 50% or something that are actual... You know, six-day creationist, creationist yeah. which is frightening. And 40% of young people in Iceland are full-on atheists, self-identifying atheists. 40%. That's a big number. I like it. A, yeah, I love it. Number. Jesus. Wish it was higher. <laughs> well, I wish it was in the States, you know? <laughs> the, the other interesting to, thing to me about this study was that, you know, this isn't really a case of a secular country becoming more secular. 
The same study found that Icelanders over the age of 55, and that's not that old. I mean, when I think of like people really gripping onto religion, I'm thinking like mid mid 60s (laughs) to late. And only 11% of those over 55 are atheist and 89% believe in a God or gods, which is remarkably similar to the U.S. where 92% of older Americans believe in a God or gods. Does anyone have any thoughts on why Iceland's theism would collapse so suddenly? Well, I think it kind of is following the same route that a lot of other countries that have established government religions is you have a whole bunch of people kind of like, I don't want to, and I especially don't want my government telling me what I have to believe or Mm. where my taxes should be going for religious reasons, which is the argument that we've made on the show before is that the separation of church and state that we have in America is what allows religion to flourish in the first place. Without that, you're going to get disaffected youth and people saying like, I don't want to go to the church of England. I don't want to prop up their religion. That's bullshit. And so they're going to shut down completely. Well, do you, do you think it's come about because of dissatisfaction, like what you're saying or I always thought it was more of a, well, it's just completely ubiquitous. It becomes a normal part of my life, and I just don't give a shit anymore. But if it was ubiquitous, people are like, yeah, sure, I'm a a Christian, whatever, it don't matter. Instead of actually going completely opposite and say, like, no, I am atheist. Hmm. I like that they said that a lot of old people were dying off. And that's where a lot of that ubiquitous stuff would be. It's like, oh, well, I've always been, you know, whatever Lutheran uh, uh, evangelical church of Iceland. Like, I've always been that. So, yeah, of course I'm a Christian. As opposed to the younger ones that see Yeah, but then if they don't have this rabid base pushing uh, religious beliefs in the schools, well, so the students grow up. We also have like the internet now, so people can see what's happening in other countries like America where technically the government shouldn't be getting into the religious ideals of other people. And they can see that and be like, I don't want my government doing that either, and fuck you for trying. Oh, could be. So, yeah, it, that's why... Uh, it. I, I kind of get mad, but I'm kind of like, eh, eh, yeah, it's kind of. Whenever I see like <laughs> theist people, like, I want to make this a theocracy and I want to push Christianity into our constitution and make everyone a Christian, it's like you're shooting yourself in the foot, man. That's you're going to destroy the the freedoms you have, and no one's going to want to jump on board with your bullshit if you force them. You only have the goodwill of being a nice guy who just wants to be moral and good for everybody, and you're, you're definitely going to lose that if you try to force it. Jeff in the chat room blames the entire thing on Bjork. I agree. <laughs> it was that swan dress. It had to be. Uh, so we need to import Bjork. <laughs> I, I, she's a singer songwriter. Yeah. Sugar I, I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever heard any of her music. Oh, oh Jesus, dude! Yeah, I, I, I've, I've heard the the name. I'm, I've probably seen a music video way back on MTV forever ago, maybe, but I'm, I, I'm not sure. Okay, we apologize for Reb. We don't really like him anyway. So, uh, in other good news in England, we have um, the Anglican Church, which has hit a new record low for weekly church attendance, with numbers falling falling below 1 million for the first time ever. And that's about 2% of the population there who are attending church services weekly. I have never personally been to an Anglican church church. uh, service, but I it's assume like Catholic light, right? I, I assume it's probably more stuffy and at least as droll and tedious. I as only know um, the Anglican Church from how Eddie Izzard has described it. Yes, mm-hmm. me too, and that's why I assume that. So, if you have uh, actual experience with Anglican services, got at atheistairwaves.com, let us know. I'd be interested to see what it's like, not in my head or Eddie Izzard's head, but. Um, <laughs> The Archbishop of Canterbury, whom we've talked about on this show before and who I think is totally a secret atheist. Um, he, I mean, this is the guy who's basically said, yeah, it's really hard to believe in God when so much shitty stuff is happening. And I'm not sure I always believe. There are times when I'm like, this is kind of hard to take. make that guy a saint one day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would I would be okay with that. I would. He could be the saint for atheists. That'd be great. We should make a candle. Well, I, I would have like a Mother little, Teresa said that they made her a saint. Yeah, I would just like put a Archbishop of Canterbury bobblehead in my car. That would totally happen. <laughs> patron saint, saint of <laughs> atheists, please, patron saint, get this asshole out of my fucking way on the highway. <laughs> you do not drive fifty five in the fast lane. You just do not oh, do that, <laughs> motherfucker. Okay, so that guy, who's <laughs> totally going to be on my dashboard one night, uh, had this to say about the collapse of the Church of England. 
Quote, in some parts of the communion, decline, decline in numbers has been a pattern for many years. In England, our numbers have been fall, falling at 1% every year since World War II. The culture is becoming anti-Christian, whether it is on matters of sexual morality or the care for people at the beginning or the end of life. It is easy to paint a gloomy picture. <clears throat> and I guess my response to that would be... Yeah, if you want to call anti-Christian uh, disagreeing with your stance that uh, the morality of not using latex is more important than human lives. Uh, or that, that like your tax money should be, go specifically to the church without your knowing mm -hmm. it until recently. Right. Or that, you know, human suffering is not as important as obeying God's rules about not ending your life. If that's what anti-Christian is, Okay. Sign me up. <laughs> I'm anti-Christian. I think that people should not die of AIDS and use condoms. And I don't care what God's rule about that is. So if that makes me anti-Christian, okay. I guess I am. Although I think that would be an overarching, probably anti-religious thing. Because most of them have their bullshit. I'm not against all religious rules. I'm against Some of them, all religious rules. Because some of them make sense. Because like thou shalt not kill. That's the, a good rule. Because the, I'm against them because they're formulated from a bad epistemological standpoint. They didn't come to it because they had an empathological uh, thought that hey, killing is bad because you know I don't want to be killed. They are saying that because they're God said so, and that's not a good reason to believe anything, even if it is good at its core. You get on with your hardline self. Um, That's right. Reverend Redbeard apparently has some insight into the Anglic Anglican Church. He says it's Catholic Church without the Pope. It's highly formal and conservative. I don't need that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So before we move on, I want to remind everyone of upcoming events. Uh, currently, we have our book club going on. We're reading uh, A Manual for Creating Atheists by Peter Bogosian. How's it going for everybody? I found out that it, this is not a book you want on Audible. Oh, it's not? I actually read it for like for realsies, like on paper. So. Ooh, yeah, which I don't do very fancy. often. Yeah, that was very fancy. <laughs> I did both. I've done both. Um, Why is the audio version so bad? It, it's not that it's bad. It's just that it's it's very dense. Um, and if, if you're driving, it's kind of difficult to pay attention to the way it, you would need to to follow along. So. Oh, but I also uh, did a historicity of Jesus on Audible and that Ooh, was that, impossible. That one was a toughie to do yeah. on audiobook. I'm, on I'm the about way, a third done with that one. <laughs> on the way up, in fact, I traded with uh, <laughs> I traded with Petey. I said, I've got the audiobook and you've got the hard copy. I'll buy you a copy of the audiobook. Yeah, I got audio. <laughs> <laughs> I was the, the book book was like, that's a big book. <laughs> I was I was listening to it on plane rides. And I was just making bookmarks on, on my mm -hmm. app as I went through. That one was crazy. Uh, we are going to have our meeting to discuss the book on February 20th. Um, I am mere minutes away from confirming with Anthony Magna Bosco that he is going to be here that day. He is going to join our book club meeting and then... Which give, day was that again? It's uh, Saturday. Saturday the... 20th? The 20th. Cool. Yeah. Um, PD will not be there. No. Because you suck. I'm because you always do stuff when we schedule things. Going to a hockey game, a real <laughs> hockey game. You're not. This is the hockey guy. You can't be the hockey person. He's the hockey person. Exactly. I'm the hockey person. Please. I was watching. I'm learning rules. I was watching <laughs> Mr. Hockey at 3 a.m. last night before work. <laughs> I was asleep. How about the morals? Uh, so uh, make sure you come out to that if you're local. Um, I again I highly recommend yeah the book. I'm really sad I can't make it I would love to actually be there so I'm still reading the book slowly but yeah. I, I'm really if you would have gone to San Antonio with us you could have already met him I and talked to him I know I'm really sad about that but yeah so yeah. it's a super cool thing you should totally read the book and show up so uh, patreon.com slash atheist airwaves if you would like to support our show uh, for as little as a dollar an episode you can get access to our post show content we're going to be talking tonight about uh Crap. We're going to be talking about some Planned Parenthood things. And what was the other goddamn thing? We're going to make Chesney Rage quit. We're going to make so. Chesney Rage quit. She's rage walking quit. home, people. That's going to happen. Stay tuned. <laughs> that's it's a long way happen. home. Oh, that's right. She, she can't leave him. She wants to. <laughs> it's, She's going to wait for Petey. It's she can stop miles. out into the other room. That's all she can We're do. We're talking about 35 miles. She's walking. <laughs> all right. Um, We only have time for maybe one or Well, we've only got two more. Never mind. we got two quick stories. 
David Bowie died this week. Did anyone notice that? My yeah. my Facebook feed informed me. I got to times. listen to his over station and on over XM. and over it's again. It's pretty awesome. Um, was was anyone a fan of David Bowie? Well, like yeah. like Bajork or whatever. The pre- I, oh, jeez! I, I also get out. I also didn't really listen to David Bowie, <laughs> although I did like that 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 Star Command, the Space Control song or whatever. That was a good, oh. that was a good song. I like that. <laughs> or I whatever that one song. Yeah, the, 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 only in the sense the, that I saw Labyrinth as the, a child. The Star Command, the Space Control, or whatever. Like, that was oh a, that was Jesus, a good song. dude. Uh, Ryan in the chat room reminds me we're talking about the dumbass cross in the post show. That's what we're talking about. Oh, yeah. I forgot oh. about that. We'd already decided we're going to talk about that. So the dumbass cross in Corpus Christi, we're going to talk about yeah, that. We're, we're aiming to be the first losers of Corpus Christi. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, so anyway, I was a huge, I am a huge fan of David Bowie. He's still dead, but I can still listen to his music. Um, it's like literally the first concert my daughter went to, my wife was still pregnant with, with That's her super cool <laughs> <laughs> I, I i shell out hundreds of dollars to get front row tickets to david bowie yeah, i figured he was more in your age group so. he way predates me he was making music <laughs> before i was alive but i mean he's still amazing was yeah. amazing still amazing he's still amazing mm-hmm. uh, we're not going to see any new music from him yeah. but um david bowie was also an atheist he was sort of a, a reluctant atheist in that it didn't it never sat, sat well with him I think based on what I've read of his interviews over the years he always felt a little uncomfortable with the atheist label although that this, he he was not a believer so he was an atheist although he did talk about you know dabbling in Christianity which I thought was a fun way of describing like trying like dabbling like a, like you dabble in like witchcraft or something well, dabble I did that though. doesn't everybody though like it to where it takes a good community too to be able to be cemented in like i'm very comfortable now because i mean I, I guess i, I guess i with. dabbled in baptist stuff for 14 years or See? whatever but See? i don't know if i consider that <laughs> dabbling but, but I, just, I just like the terminology i thought terminology <laughs> was fun that's what i did like when i deconverted from catholicism i i say this all the time i hit every branch on the theist tree on my way out of it I was a Scientologist. I was a Wiccan. I, I went to non-denominational Christian places. I was all over the place trying to figure out what was true because it it took a while before it occurred to me that because Catholicism wasn't true, that didn't mean that some of these other religions were actually true. It took me a while to realize, hey, it's kind of likely that none of them are true. It's weird because I went through it in like an opposite order. Like I went and as a Christian looked at all the other ones and said like, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. So these, these are all bullshit. And then eventually it was like, oh no, mine's bullshit too. And then slowly, yeah. surely, work your way to atheism. But. So you dabbled, is what you're saying. A, 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 childhood, a childhood of dabbling, I guess. See, I, I did this weird thing where I was, I was religious, and then I was an atheist, and then I was religious again, and then I was atheist, so... Uh, once I once how, I how used to that? once I used the word atheist, I was in both feet. I mean, it, and every other religion I backed out of eventually. Uh, atheism, I've been in both feet for a long time, and it never, I never went back, not even for a second. It was weird. Uh, that was, I don't know, that's me. No, I, the, the, I think the only time I ever felt bad after becoming an atheist was had a friend that was very Christian. Well, she was sort of Christian in high school, like. Not really, but then as she got older, she became religious, and then she kind of made me feel bad for being an atheist, and that was the only time I think I ever felt bad about being an atheist, because I respected her so much. But Reverend Redbeard in the chat room says, Franklin Graham was quick to suggest that David Bowie is probably hellbound. I had not heard that, but fuck that guy. Mm-hmm. Right. I hate that guy more and more with every day. I... He always comes up when we're prepping for this show. Very rarely does he make it to our show because he's just such a fucking idiot. And that makes me just as angry. Well, it's like after every, especially recently, the you know, we've had the Lemmy guy died. The, we got the, the Lemmy the, guy? I'm just telling the, you, Reb, the what guy? I'm gonna, the Lemmy guy, the, the Lemmy Motorhead. Guy, motorhead oh, Lemmy guy. And then there was Killmeister. the... Killmeister. Let me kill Then there was the Hotel California guitarist guy. Len Fry. Len Fry. He died. So, I don't care about the Eagles. All right, and the point I'm getting at is like after each one of these people have died or whatever, this man, at least Billy Graham or whoever else, comes and says like, well, you know, they're rock and roll music. It'll do you in eventually. And it's just like... Oh. Fuck you. Yeah. 
they're all like in their late 60s, which is young to die, but still. Uh, Kitty Scary in the chat room said they named a constellation for Bowie, didn't they? Yes, they did. They, oh, cool. they made a new constellation <laughs> out of the PD punch there. Reb in the face. I have permission. Yes. Post show. Do it. Post show. We're going to punch <laughs> Reb not, in the face. I'm not Jay. I don't like pain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but getting back on topic, they have done to David Bowie what they do to every atheist that dies, including Christopher Hitchens, which is they're talking about him having a deathbed conversion. Well, I was going to ask you about that, especially since you said you have read more interviews with uh, Bowie than I have. I was just reading this article, and they certainly made it sound like if he was uncomfortable with the atheist label. Um, what I took from the article was that he probably wasn't really, that he was probably more deistic, more the whole spiritual but not religious, not really identified with any organized so there's group. There's probably a, a higher power out there. Yeah, something well, that's kind of what fuzzy they, wuzzy. That's what they were claiming the deathbed conversion was about. Because they weren't saying he was going. he went full on Jesus or whatever. If you read his old... Um, uh, interviews basically what he says is that he struggled with it a long time he didn't believe but then he would go back and forth and uh, that sort of thing but he was never a believer uh, well not never but he hasn't been a believer for a long time but he questioned in a way that I don't question like I'm I'm at peace with my atheism and I feel like he just never was at peace he, but he wasn't thinking oh there is something out there it's just not this well and it, it seems like Bowie's always had a problem with labels as well I mean I've read, read other stuff about how he was probably bisexual to a certain degree but he kind of said it then he backpedaled on it because he didn't want to be labeled he wanted to be more about his music than being known as some sort of sure. uh, gay icon or as a religious icon or anything like that so I think that was kind of why he maybe waffled on the atheist stuff a bit because I, sure. I don't think he wanted to be labeled as an atheist he just wanted to be labeled as a musician so the sun tabloid this week printed quotes from various anonymous sources because of course they're not naming any of these people because that that would ruin the effect mm -hmm. um and they these anonymous sources said that bowie had said recently quote you don't get any atheists on the battlefield referring to his battle with cancer it's the worst fucking yeah, yeah that's the only thing about the article that really just yeah i just don't crazy. i thought i don't believe that quote no yeah, yeah. it's like i know like two different people who are atheists that have been on the battle it's, it's me. yeah uh and he also they also claimed that he said that after finding out he had cancer quote he concluded that there was something greater than all of us and it may be some version of what others ca might call god this was probably quite comforting he certainly wasn't scared of death so because he wasn't scared of death, he also wasn't an atheist. Oh, so they're Oprah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't get that reference. Uh, she's the one who told, uh, what's the swimmer's name that, um, you know, if you believe, you know, she, she was interviewing an atheist and she's like. Uh, oh, the swimmer that swam from Cuba to Florida yeah. or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. Man, and if you have the awe, well, that's not an atheist. If yeah. you're in awe of the universe, then suddenly you're not an atheist. Fuck that. Thanks, Oprah, for your spiritual. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Carl Sagan and Neil deGrasse Tyson, despite his protestations, are both atheists, and they both had the awe. Um, also fueling rumors about his conversion was the last tweet from his wife before his death, which was, quote, the struggle is real, but so is God. But dudes, she's a Muslim. She believes in God. <laughs> Yeah, so just because it's coming from her and she's married to him doesn't yeah. give it validity to well, his it, point of view. And his last Twitter follow was that uh, parody God account, right? Yeah, oh, it says a that. whole bunch. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah that was... that was the last thing before he died. Uh -huh. was, but and it almost seems like I mean, because uh, what's a Bowie was like recording stuff and putting out you know stuff up until the day he died. Practically, mm -hmm. I would think if he had some sort of religious revelation, I don't think he would have been too you know, KG about, you know, exposing that, you know, towards the, the end of his life. I mean, as he made you know, that music video, it was mm -hmm. kind of heart wrenching. So, but and I, I feel like he would have been okay at that point saying like, Oh yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. totally a Christian or whatever. Why would he be afraid to say anything at that point yeah. instead of all these assumptions that people are making right. on just the little, whatever fun stuff that he was doing. Jack in the chat room, uh, helpfully notes that it was, <laughs> It was Diana Nyad that Oprah was interviewing the swim woman who swam, the atheist who swam from Cuba to, to Florida. Atheists can swim? Yeah. Look at that. 
Not you, but <laughs> some of us, win. yes. Whatever. Yeah, well, she's not an atheist anymore now. What? Oprah converted does it, her. Does so. any, <laughs> I, I just have the awe factor, that's all. <laughs> it was kind of a Mormon thing. She was not not uh, converted at the end, but Oprah was like, oh, you're not an atheist. I'm not? <laughs> nope. Sorry. <laughs> uh, why do you think uh, believers want to do this to atheists, though? Because like I said, they do this literally to every atheist who dies. They start rumors that they had a deathbed conversion. Well, I don't think... Why wouldn't they just stick with the oh, another one of those bastards is, in, is burning in hell again? I don't think they're doing it to be mean to atheists. And, we're, and they only do it for big people. They don't do it for random Joe Blow Well, guy. they do it for their, their flock because it yeah. gives the, the preachers, whoever that is, uh, another made-up story yeah. that they can sell. L- look at this social icon who was an atheist all his life and on his deathbed, you know what he told his family? I love the Lord Jesus. And- because we have, we have preachers that have turned atheist and they will tell you that yeah, the preachers get up there and they swear these are true stories and they're all made up. They have books that they give each other about all these dumbass stories that are supposed to be inspirational. And really, they're they're peddling fear. And so rather than let us, this is just, I'm totally pulling this out of my ass. It's a conjecture. Rather than letting us have these people who are like, eh, I'm totally unafraid. And I'm going to go to my death totally unafraid of your bullshit. I'm not Ron Reagan unafraid of burning in hell. Rather than letting them have, letting the, these role models for not being afraid of this shit out there they're like oh he was afraid too because there's a good reason to be afraid uh-huh. and that's why mm, you need to be you need to believe this although stuff. i think it kind of sends Yay, out a pascal's bad... wager yeah exactly i think it kind of sends out a bad um example though because some people are gonna be like well david bowie didn't live a christian life and you just converted on his deathbed i can do the same thing well they don't care as long as you believe yeah that's yeah. their that's their whole thing yeah, it doesn't do, any, it doesn't do. do them any no. good if they're not getting your tithes though but here's the thing is like we don't all get the luxury of having 18 months to contemplate our own demises. You know, there's uh, highway crashes, 3,457 3, in uh Texas last year, which I know because they put that in my... I have to drive by those signs every day. But you, you get your whole life flashes before your eyes when you oh, die. Oh, time. During that the time, bam, I love Jesus. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm loving Jesus it's right be a now. a great ride home, Chesney. Third one right here. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening to Atheist Airwaves, sponsored by Corpus Christi Atheists and the South Texas Coalition of Reason. If you'd like to compliment, complain, or make a suggestion, please write to us at god at atheistairwaves.com. Thank you to Tombstone to Dead Man for our outro music. Patreon.com slash Atheist Airwaves if you would like to get access to our post show and support our show but please show up 7 30 central every tuesday ish uh to listen for free if you'd like we'd much rather have you guys in the chat room uh big thanks to jack for coming back you had a lot more uh you had a lot more company this time this week we'll see you guys next week bye goodbye bye They're skeptic means so much more than being an atheist. And until you accept that, you won't relate to this. The cognitive dissonance that you experience is when there's things you claim to believe in but ain't living it. Most of you say you are the type to question everything until I hear the conspiracy theories that you echoing. And when I scrutinize the things you try to say are lies, expose your sources as suspect, I see your logic dies. Some still believe in pseudosciences, engage in special pleading when theists use the exact same reasoning. I've even seen atheists use arguments from ignorance and see more pressed to tell me exactly just what the difference is a skeptic without the ability to analyze is just as bad as the theist cause he'll probably accept the lie just as long as it verifies all his biases applying it to his knowledge pool and then he's diving in so I'm not saying that some conspiracies do not exist I'm just saying that a lot of them are some bullshit so I'ma call a spade a spade no matter who asserts it nobody's perfect and just one lie then it's all perverted bring down the curtains on that sad display that only weighs the question of yourself and all the things you say start the day and maybe we can rise the second uh...
hater, skeptic, means so much more than being an atheist. And until you accept that, you won't relate to this. The cognitive dissonance that you experience is when there's things you claim to believe in but ain't living it. Most of you say you are the type to question everything until I hear the conspiracy theories that you echoing. And when I scrutinize the things you try to say are lies, expose your sources and suspect, I see your logic dies. Some still believe in pseudosciences, engage in special pleading when theists use the exact same reasoning. I've even seen atheists use arguments from ignorance and see my press to tell me exactly just what the difference is. A skeptic without the ability to analyze is just as bad as the theist because it probably accept a lie. Just as long as it verifies all his biases, applying it to his knowledge pool, and then he's diving in. So I'm not saying that some conspiracies do not exist. I'm just saying that a lot of them are some bullshit. So I'm gonna call a spade a spade no matter who asserts it. Nobody's perfect and just one lie, then it's all perverted. Bring down the curtains on that sad display that only weighs the question itself and all the things you say start the day. And maybe we can rise above and be examples for others to emulate, and that's the way we win this battle. So this is where I'm making my stand, and now regardless who don't like it or how they get mad, see why the rest of y'all capitulate and go with the plan. I'll be beating on this wall until I'm breaking my hand. So listen why I state official policy, no matter how I'm threatened with hell, then never silence me. I know that you don't see this as imperative, but I refuse to lose and let the stupid frame the narrative. Drop a beat. Jay, Jay, Holla. Jay, drop a beat. All Thanks four of us were kind of assholes. Well, that's the whole point of the show. You know what's hilarious about Mormons, though? Everything. Chasing Mormons off my stupid group. David G Unit McAfee. G Unit. Uh, <laughs> mushrooms. Done them like five times. Ayahuasca. DMT. 420. Holla. <laughs> 420. It's like going to a strip club with six year olds. <laughs> I am awful and dirty and terrible, and I have these urges, urges, urges. Follow. I am just not into torture. I'm not into drinking cum. <laughs> not into torture. Duh. Duh. Black eyed virgin. Black eyed virgins, what was that? Jesus Lunchables. <laughs> because this is proselytizing through banging chips. <laughs> Nobody wants fucking balls in the mouth. All right, some people want fucking balls in the mouth. Moving on. Colbert is a Catholic. Colbert is a Catholic. I have a penguin fetish. Duh. Duh. This guy pulled this whole thing out of his ass. Right. Like a circle <laughs> jerk. With Jesus in the middle. Is that a really good to say? <laughs> We're Savannah gangbanger. Eh. Yeah. Yeah, stop.